We are live, and uh, you're listening to Power Talks, where talk is real, truth is in the talk, and there is power in truth. Good morning, Melody. It is Monday, all the way Monday. It <laughs> is Monday, Monday, Monday. Um, Monday good morning. Monday. Can't trust that day. <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday. Can't oh, trust yeah. that one either. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway. we should go with the songwriting. Um, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> oh, gracious. It has been a Monday already. I got back late, late last night, had a good trip. Uh, it was a long trip. Um, lots of things going on that people don't uh, really understand or know about, and that's what we talked about um, over the weekend. And um, it was about government overreach, and then how we had uh, the um, the people out west – that are being attacked by BLM and USDA and EPA and all those good people, you know, the alphabet bureaucracy. And uh, the climax of the, uh, of the weekend was Ammon Bundy coming in to uh, speak. And um, it was quite moving and heart-wrenching. And yet encouraging because of the man's faith and spirit. And had this little girl there. She's nine years old, just cute as a button, uh, sitting there listening to her daddy like most little kids, just bored to death, you know. <laughs> but she uh, was there with her daddy. And, of course, they had had him incarcerated for two years, and he wasn't with his little one. And so it was uh, it was quite moving and quite emotional. And uh, there were protesters that weren't happy about him being there. Um, they were outside, not inside, and they were a biodiversity group that hasn't got any knowledge at all about agriculture anywhere. And it was just really an interesting time, and uh, maybe tomorrow I can give a little better synopsis. I didn't get in until the wee hours last night, and then I got in here a little bit late, and the computer didn't want to work. Like I said, it's been a Monday all the way around. <laughs> so we are here, and uh, we are... Uh, Committed, I am committed to push on for we the people and uh, small government and uh, truth. So. Well, we're, I'm excited to hear a little bit more about your trip. And um, so make sure you get a good night's sleep this, tonight. <laughs> and, uh, yes, ma'am, I will. And I will, have, I will. And okay. I will get a synopsis written up and, and let everyone know just exactly what happened. And they can go. I believe they're going to keep the uh, the streaming up. They streamed. Um, they had some problems, but they worked through it as the weekend progressed. You know how that tech stuff is. And it's rangerights.com, rangerights.com, and they have a little button there you can click for the for the stream. And I think you can hear everyone. I spoke just before Ammon Bundy, and that was it. Was good. It was all good. They, after every day, they had all the speakers come up on stage and had a had a question and answer time. So anyway, it was it was a good time. It was a long weekend, um, short in some ways and, and long in others because I, I traveled Wednesday evening. I traveled and Thursday evening I spent all day traveling. And uh, so I kind of missed, lost a day, you know, Thursday. Plus I was, you know, going to the other time zone where there are two hours behind us. And I was still on my time, and they were doing their time. So anyway, it was. Uh, we will give a good report on it. Good. And, well, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Looking okay. forward to it. Yeah. Um, there's a, little, you know, the big news is uh, the the French uh, president Macron. He's coming to the United States, and you know, I mean, it's just like. Um, all about Tehran, and um, it, it, it's, I don't even know what to think of it. It's a, a lot of, um, a lot of noise, more noise. Mm. I look we have at a lot it. of noise. Um, Angela Merkel, she's coming f- later in the week, and she's not getting the same, um, the same welcoming as Macron is. I wonder and, why. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there is a special relationship between, uh, uh, it seems to be between Trump and Macron. And uh, I don't know what to make of it. It is what it is. And, uh, um, you know, he's being presidential. And that's what everybody wanted him to be. So uh, we'll see how it uh, turns out. And, uh, um, 
you know, I, 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 Macron is, uh, he was, um, you know, I'm not sure which side he actually falls on. He speaks to speak, but I'm really not sure if he's, uh, if he, you know, walks the talk. Um, mm. So we'll have to find out, and um, only because I know of his grooming. Um, you know, he's been groomed by the elite and so forth. So, um, we'll see. We'll see how it all turns out. I came across this interesting article. Elections is, this upcoming elections is beginning, beginning, beginning to get more and more, uh, noisy. And I came across this article out of Texas. It's Houston. And we often say, I say it, you say it, a lot of people say it, people got to get involved locally in their local elections. And this is how we can start changing perhaps things on a bigger scale of things. Well, remember the other side thinks that too. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what this is, and this is what this is about. Uh, this is, um, primary night last month, Franklin Bynum won the Democratic nomination to become a criminal court judge in Houston. The 34-year-old defense attorney had no challengers. Uh, his supporters packed the restaurant. They were there to celebrate. And many in the crowd were members of the Democratic Socialists of America. Mr. Bynum is one of their own. A mm. socialist who, along with at least 16 others, appeared on the ballot in primary races across the state of Texas. Now, we always think of Texas as, you know, the American apple pie and all, the, you know, and here you have 16 others are appearing on ballots that claim to be DSAs, Democratic Socialists of America. He says he's running as a socialist. He's a far left candidate. And what he is trying to do is be a Democrat who actually stands for something. And he tells people, how are we going to materially improve conditions in your life? Rather than shy away from being called a socialist, candidates like Mr. Bynum are embracing the label. He is mm -hmm. among dozens of DSA members running in this fall's midterm for offices across the country at nearly every level. In Hawaii, Canela Ng, a state representative, is running for Congress. Gail McLaughlin, a former mayor of Richmond, is running to be state's uh, lieutenant governor. In Tennessee, Dennis Prater, Prater, professor at East Tennessee State University, is running to be a county commissioner. Supporters, many of them are the millennials, say they are drawn by the DSA's promise to combat income inequality, which they believe is tainting every facet of American life, from the criminal justice system to medical care to politics. They argue that capitalism has let them down, saddling them with student debt, high rent, and uncertain job prospects. I said on Friday on my afternoon program, how does capitalism straddle them with, with student debt? In my mm -hmm. day and age, if you didn't have the money to go to college, you didn't you go. You didn't go. And if you went and you didn't have the money, you worked. worked to pay way your way. Mm -hmm. And um, so these millenniums, millennials have been, you know, brainwashed, conditioned to believe that, uh, um, the, you know, they're saying that the Democratic Party, has lost touch with the working people. And uh, since November 2016, DSA's membership has increased from about 5,000 to 35,000 nationwide. That's in two years, one, you know, not even two years. The number of local groups has grown from 40 to 181, including 10 in Texas. Houston's once dormant chapter now has nearly 300 members. We want to see money stop controlling everything, and that includes politics. Mm. Um, so this is what they're using on to promote their socialist agenda. And Mr. Bynum signed up for a campaign newsletter. He says, what I'm trying to do is to be a Democrat who actually stands for something. <laughs> well. <laughs> you know, and um, he says that he thinks that the, the Democrats have, have lost their way. And they're trying to find a better way. 
and many socialist candidates sound less like revolutionaries and more like traditional Democrats who seek to return to policies in the mold of Roosevelt's New Deal. They want a single-payer health care, a higher minimum wage, greater protections for the unions. Others advocate more extreme changes, such as abolishing the prison system. In the case of Mr. Bynum, he wants an end to a cash bail system that requires people accused of crimes, even minor offenses, to pay money to be released from jail before trial. Um, so, I mean, this just goes on, and I'm thinking, how dangerous is this? And, you know, while we're being, while we're concentrating on, you know, the French pres- president and his uh, state dinner and, and, and the clothing, what people are going to be wearing, uh, on the other hand, we're focused on Mueller and and uh, everything else. Those are all distractions. You know, we get all ourselves upset because we have these um, the, these Muslim faith uh, politicians getting into various political positions across this country, and now you hear a socialist, Democratic Socialists of America, that is growing quickly. And we saw the strength of Bernie Sanders, how everyone was soon to jump on the bandwagon. So as we're all being focused in various directions, look what truly is happening to our freedoms and liberties. And so I I thought that was the kind of a, I mean, it's a lengthy article. And uh, it talks about um, how Mr. Bynum has embraced the label, label socialist. Um, his uh, republic his republican uh, opponent is using reject socialism and yes social socialism today you know perhaps it doesn't have it doesn't have the same views as it had in you know the early 1900s yeah uh it's you know they changed the definition to some degree or not the definition but the promotion I was going to say the definition is still the same. The definition same. is the same, but the promotion of socialism, um, because they made it a little more friendlier, a little more acceptable, palatable, um, because they're there to help people, and they're out to get the wealthy. So, um, I actually have the definition in front of me. It says socialism, and this is um, a government in which the means of planning, producing, and distributing goods is controlled by a central government that theoretically seeks a more just and equitable distribution of property and labor. In actuality, most socialist governments have ended up being no more than dictatorships over workers by ruling elite, and it'll be no different with the Democrats. That's what they want. If they were really worried, about um, the cost of education here in the United States for these college kids, they'd stop making them take all these courses that they don't need for their professions. It is outrageously expensive to go to college for no good reason. And the government, with their grants and their whatevers, they uh, they make over 30-some percent on that, on those government, on those student loans and grants and such. So it's a money-making project for the government, so to speak. I'm doing government. Well, the, gover- <laughs> well, the government has government to make some money. <laughs> yeah, because cause they keep spending it. <laughs> they keep spending it. But the, I just want to make this quick comment before we go into break. Mr. Bynum says he's more focused on building a movement than he is in helping Democrats get elected. That's scary, too. Go get the children. That was a topic over the weekend. We are headed into a break. Your calls are welcome at 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. You're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning, and we will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. 
Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Years ahead of the dominant media, FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. And the way I return, you're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning where truth is truth is in the talk and there's power in the truth. (laughs) It is Monday. It is Monday. Well, you know... Did you want to continue with with the college thing, or were we kind of finished with the the socialists? Yeah, I was. You know, that was the, the last thing I wanted to get in there. So, so I'm done. All right. But I think it was okay. important because what we tried to do, we it tell people important. they're also doing the same thing. And uh, you see the, the, the how popular Bernie Sanders were among the, the youth, and Lyndon Larouche. I mean, he was a he's a. I mean, he had some. F- unbelievable research uh, uh, people. I mean, his research is next to, I mean, he had the best research out there. I don't even know if he's still alive. He was in prison, but when he got out, and every every presidential race, he ran. But his target was the youth. And I could never figure it out. He's running for president, and he's approaching the youth, and I'm thinking to myself, well, that's no way to get you elected. <laughs> so it really wasn't about <laughs> being elected, being a, a president. It was all about uh, being able to get into these colleges. It was able to get in there and promote his uh, uh, democratic agenda. And, uh, he, you know, he certainly he had some great ideas on the economy. He knew what was going on in the economy and, and what was happening, how it was happening when it came to the economy. But his um, but he was very much a, a Democrat, very much after the youth. He hated the Brits. It was all the Brits fault. Maybe it is. I don't know. But. Um, they're after the youth now. I mean, look what really going are on in the, the look what they're doing in the public school. Look what they've done, and I can't remember, Hogue, Hog or Hogue or however you say his name. They've made this kid a star. This kid from Florida. They've made him a star. He is in their movement, and he's against guns. He, and he's totally clueless, arrogant, obnoxious. He's a perfect uh, politician. He's going to go places. CNN will hire him. He'll be all good. But it's it's um. They've got to get the youth. 
They just confused didn't pop them. out of nowhere. I don't believe he just popped out of nowhere. He looks awfully old for being 16 years old. Well, I'm just saying. I don't know. He looks pretty wet behind the ears to me. He was working on, uh, he was part of the uh, school newspaper, I think. But anyway, I'm just saying. <laughs> They've taken him under their wing, and they've taken this situation under their wing. And, of course, when we have the table turned, they don't talk about that. They don't talk about that at all. So the other school shooting where somebody had a gun and stopped it, there was one that was killed. But they don't talk about that because somebody actually stopped it that had a gun. And this weekend, yesterday, there was a shooting but, at the wait Waffle a minute, House. Wait a minute. I want to talk about that. Wait a minute. I have something to say. <laughs> Well, then say it. <laughs> so no longer are we saying, who was that masked man? No, we've got a naked shooter. Okay, now you can do it. <laughs> well, no, I was just, you know, if you have the information there, go ahead. That was, that was my funny. It was funny. Oh, we were supposed what? to laugh. Who was that masked man? We can't say that because he wasn't masked. He was naked and he wasn't a good guy. Go no. ahead. <laughs> Go ahead with what you, you know, got. I've got it here in front of me, too. So here's, I wanted here's, to... a, here's another nut. Oh, God. Was, talk about a metal was, case. That was in the... FBI's? Yes. I mean, yeah. he went to the president. He wanted to talk to President Trump. And yeah. they had arrested him. He took his weapons away. This is a case where I... This is what I say all the time. Whenever you have these people that have challenges, mental, they're nuts. Um, <laughs> Someone needs to be held accountable, yeah. like their doctors, mm -hmm. even their parents. This father gave the they weapons gave back to the kid. He's not a kid. He's an adult. He was, what, 29 or something? Yeah. So, um, you know, again, and they might uh, place charges on the father. I heard where they might place charges on the father. Not sure that uh, they will, but I believe he's still, uh, they haven't captured this person there's still a a manhunt for him he has travis ranking uh, he was 29 and uh, he moved to nashville in the fall he was previously from illinois he had um of course you know the ar-15 and so forth but uh, uh there was a young gentleman in there who he was also 29 uh and he was a true hero he threw his oh, yeah. He threw himself. Uh, the, the, he didn't know if the, the shooter had, uh, if his uh, weapon had, uh, um, if he had to, was if he was reloading or what. Uh, but he charged him and uh, threw the weapon, grabbed the weapon, threw it over the counter, and uh, he ran out. I don't know how many other people were in the Waffle House that he saved, but uh, you know, certainly. Uh, I mean, what else are you going to do in a situation like that? Just lay there and be shot. Let him shoot you. Well, well shoot. he. I have an article about him, about the hero, um, and he was saying, um, well, he was hurt. His his one hand was severely burned from the heat on the barrel, and then he uh, sustained a an, uh, an injury or uh, he got shot in the elbow, uh, winged or something or grazed anyway he just he's described as a hero but he doesn't see it that way he says i don't really know when everyone said that of being a hero it it feels kind of selfish he said i was just trying to get myself out i saw the opportunity and pretty much took it he says i when he came in and i'm thinking what are these people thinking they're sitting there you know at the waffle house trying to have a um you know a meal he says when he came in i distinctively remember thinking that he is going to have to work for this kill, and I had a chance to stop him, and thankfully I stopped him. I grabbed the gun, and I kept it down. He had one hand on it, and I pulled it away and threw it over the bar. Um, and his name is, um, is James Shaw, Jr., and he is the hero of the day. And there was lots of activity on Twitter last night. I noticed when I was traveling, and everybody, you know... Uh, they're calling this a racist situation. I'm thinking it's a mental case situation. This kid, this man that did this, he walks in, you know, you know, he walks in and all he's got on is a jacket. I don't know why he's trying to keep warm or what, but he had a jacket on and his rifle and he's going to go in there and shoot people. He's naked. And, uh, uh, 
first of all, isn't there a law against that? I mean, shouldn't he not be running around naked? Do we need to pass a law that he can't uh, carry a gun naked? Isn't that I don't dangerous? know. They, bi- they bicycle nude in, in San Francisco, so who knows? <laughs> Oh, Lord, I'm glad I didn't go there. <laughs> yes, they do. I know they were trying to get the law to where they couldn't anymore. don't know if it was passed, but, uh, yeah. But the fact that he was on the radar, he should have been on the radar, the FBI, Secret Service, all of these people knew about him, and yet he gets through, you know, and um, this uh, this particular person on, on Twitter, she's an investigative journalist. Her name's Cheryl Atkinson. And her comment was another shooter who was on FBI and Secret Service radar prior to the shooting. If we can't figure out who the real risks are and monitor them when they literally cross law enforcement's path, how are we to be confident all this secret surveillance nets much at all? What's it really doing for us, all this secret surveillance and letting, you know, getting in on people's conversations and and knowing what we're all about and and registering guns and all this crazy stuff how we know that that's even going to work since they're letting these people get through to do their crimes and um we have uh we have a caller we have oscar on the line oscar how are you today very well ladies hope you are good morning good morning we are we're doing good uh a couple of things uh uh, last uh, weekend, I had the uh, pleasure to talk to uh, Pastor Bush uh, Paul. It was lovely, and uh, nonetheless, we met you, ladies. But uh, Thank I you. hope you had a lovely weekend anyway. Yes. <laughs> and, Thank uh, you. I'm glad you enjoyed Pastor Butch. Uh, yes, we, 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 we did. And uh, now, in, in reference to uh, some of the comments that you made uh, as part of the socialism and uh, all that kind of stuff. You know, to me, socialism and communism is, right now is like a big, gigantic uh, blanket that is embracing, covering the whole world. And, yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's in every country, in the, uh, you know, and there's so many forces that are imposing this, this situation, this, uh, this, uh, I, this ideal. You know, as far as targeting the youth, you know, the youth is very easy to manipulate, and they embrace this new deity, if you may, with some kind of a romanticism, you know, uh, rebellious against their parents, against the, the way of thinking of the elderly people. They think that we're all stupid, that we don't know anything, that uh, the communism is, is is the right thing, you know, and, and thanks to capitalism and everything, and they want everything for free. But they don't seem to understand that, you know, they want, that, that if they want to go to college for free, somebody's got to pay for that. Somebody, the money has got to come from somewhere. And, and, and it's not going to come from the pockets of the oligarchs, I mean, the, uh, the, the people that are in charge of the Communist Party. It's, that's not going to be the way. Now, you know, communism and in, in the, in the, uh, in, in socialism and in, in the university is, 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 is the biggest focus of it. And not to mention the United Nations. <laughs> and, and on the other hand, now talking about the other thing that you mentioned uh, as far as the uh, destruction for the people, yes, look what is going on with the, the attacks to Trump. I mean, you know, Trump this, Trump that, Mueller this, and, and, and call me this, call me that. Why don't we talk about the crimes, the severe, substantial crimes that Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton committed? Why don't we mm. talk about that? And it's all a cover up. It's all a cover mm-hmm. up to heat up the brains of the yep. people. So, I'm sorry? Agreed. Go ahead, go ahead. We're agreeing with you. Mm-hmm. We're agreeing with you. It, it, We're it's cheering you on, Oscar. You know, and, and unfortunately, the people digest all of that and believe all that. You know. Now, Trump and, and Mr. Uh, whatever the, the president of France is, I can never remember his name. Uh, you know, that's, that's an agenda also because. Uh, uh, he, uh, France is, is getting to be a really big part of the uh, alliance as a consortium, you know, NATO and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, that, there you have it. It's destruction, destruction, destruction to eat up. Uh, I, I can't believe what this guy in, in Texas is doing, you know. I mean, yep. the people embrace that so, so, so welcome, you know, with, with open arms. And uh, thank you so much for letting me talk. I appreciate the opportunity. I want to get off the phone so somebody else can have this chance. Have uh, a good day, ladies. Thank you, Same Oscar. You. We appreciate Same. you as well. It's um, 
it's all a, a charade in many ways that and the people are falling for it. it it goes back to let me see if i've got that sitting here in my in my um it goes back to the the idea that people are falling for um uh, we're getting comfortable you know we had freedom for a while melanie uh way back we did have some freedom and i can't find my little poem but anyway it talks about from bondage to spiritual faith, from spiritual faith to great courage, from courage to uh, independence, from independence to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to apathy, from apathy back into bondage, or to dependence, I'm sorry, and then from dependence back into bondage. These entitlements that they're throwing at us, is there any wonder why? Because it enslaves us to them. We become their slaves. And uh, this idea that these kids have to go to college and spend all this money and go in debt before they ever get started with a job, it's crazy. It's ludicrous. And parents need to start telling their kids, you know, let's opt for where we had this um, this um, symposium this weekend was at an, uh, a junior college. It, it was an agriculture college. And uh, we were in a, an ag building. It was cold, <laughs> and it was huge. It was big. It was, and um, but it had concrete floors. I mean, there was obvious uh, uh, signs that it was agriculture there. That's what we're talking about: is the land and the resources and the overreach of the government. But here, these kids are, these youth. They're being told that they deserve this and they should have this and they should have that. Well, where are the parents that are? raising them and telling them, you know what, well, you got to work for a living. You want to go party on the weekend, you got to run around with your friends, you're going to pay for the gas. Or you're going to pay for your own car. Whatever happened to that uh, that mentality where we actually... Um, so who's really at fault? Well, it, it mean, lies it was, at home. It does. I mean, it's always been the, you know, the American dream. Well, you know, there was always something wrong with the American dream. I mean, I get it, and it's something to strive for, but... You know, we, we've lost so much. And again, when you, you go down that list, and I mean, it's, and that's why history repeats itself. Exactly. You know, countries continue to go through, but we're at a point where we, we have the ability to communicate. We have the ability to com- communicate a message globally to break that series of events or you know places where we're at, you know as you as you go through that list and um but it doesn't seem to be working you know maybe we are waking up people maybe people are woken up be- for other reasons mm-hmm. most people will only wake up when they're hungry and then they realize that they are a slave and then they will then they will be ready to fight for it um i'm not so when sure it hits home. They- when, when, it hit, it hits when their home. bellies are hungry, yeah, yeah, that's when it hits home. Is when or they're, they're when they or their ran- yeah, or what? Or when their ranches are taken away, or their or their livelihoods are are destroyed. Whatever industry they're in, uh, businesses, people that can't make it in a business because of all the government overreach and mandates and regulations, and you know, there's um, in my speech to the uh, to the group, I am. Um, I quoted some of the, I'm going to find it here real quick, i got my speech in front of me, um, where we are, we are experiencing many of the same things that were in the grievances of our founding fathers in the Declaration of Independence. Um, if you give me just the two seconds here, it's right in front of me, because I've got it here. Um, uh, he has re-erected he has erected multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people to eat out their substance. Look what's going on with the alphabet bureaucracy here in the United States. Look what they do. And, of course, we do believe, and there was uh, a lot of uh, talk about our families and, and what's going on with the youth but there was a youth there. He, I think he's a senior in high school now. 
that he has taken the challenge to read his constitution, and he had the little constitution books. We've all seen those. And he's passing them out places where he goes. He says, I'm not being obnoxious. I'm just passing them out. And when I give it to them, I make them sign it on the back that they promise to read it. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing if all our youth read that constitution and understood what's going on? Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if they all read the Declaration of Independence and understood the grievances of what's going on? I mean, you can't put it any plainer. They ate and eat out our substance. <laughs> They're wearing us out. They, we can't get anything done because of this. And uh, uh, anyway, we need to protect the young people they are the ones that are being stolen from us because they're the ones that are impressionable. Hitler did the same thing, and it goes on and on and on. But we do occasionally, we see somebody like this young man, uh, I think his name was Ian, I can't remember for sure, and he uh, he got up and did his little speech, and he had his little PowerPoint, and he had pictures showing where at different events he was handing out the... Um, and he's not the only one. He's got some friends that are doing it, too, handed out the Constitution uh, booklet to others, adults as well as his own peers. So there is hope when we have and see something like that. Well, certainly there's always hope. I mean, there's, you know, you have to have hope and you, you have to hope for change. And, you know, we, we hopefully will there'll be enough youths that can replace and, and also target these community um, elections to eliminate uh, folks like Mr. Bynum from being elected and being able to promote that type of a group. So, um, it, but it is a battle. And, oh, you know, we, we, and, and, and you know what? It, it really does come down to the finances of a country. Yes, it does. And that was talked about over the weekend. You know, the more that people are suffering uh, financially or are missing jobs, and that kind of thing, the more we're going to see violence, the more we're going to see them, sure. the true character come out of people. Sure. <laughs> you know, they may say that they're Christian, they may say that they're a moral people, but when they get hungry, we're going to see exactly the exactly. true character. And it's all by design. Now, that's the problem. It's all by design. Now, I think there's a little bit of, you know, the economies and, and, and countries evolve to certain degrees and so forth. But the majority of it is by design. I mean, you can't um, look at it any other fashion. Uh, you, you look at the manipulation of the people. You look at the propaganda that comes out. You look at what is streaming 24-7. And so, yes, we have the media and we have the ability to talk against it now, but uh, um, they, but we got God on our side if we used him. <laughs> but, you know, uh, you it, know it we, is, we, can, it, we can beat anybody. But, it, uh, yeah, and it, uh, it is a heart problem. It is a yeah, heart problem. It is. And uh, we have Colin Ka Kaepernick who's accusing the American police officers of lawfully lynching of black and brown people. I mean, he is all about racism. This man is rich. He's never wanted for anything in his entire life, and yet he claims to be oppressed. Now, I don't know what it is to have lived, and I know that there are prejudices, and I understand that. There are prejudices against our, our, our black brothers and sisters and our brown brothers and sisters and our Asian brothers and sisters, and there are prejudices. But here I have a story that is the opposite of a football player. His name is Jake Locker. And in 2014, he was playing football with the NFL, and, and he made a multi-million dollar contract with the NFL in 2015. And he, after he had 30 games, he had... 4,967 yards in, of passes completed and 27 touchdowns, he vanished from the public view without giving any interviews. He said he didn't have, feel like he had to do that. He didn't need to answer to anybody. It was his life. Well, the man gave his heart to Jesus. And he became and his family was more important to him than all this money and all this glory in the NFL. There's Jake Locker, who goes back home, he's helping his community, he's teaching uh, quarterbacks in his high school 
football team. He's he's grooming others. He's uh, a witness for Jesus Christ. And then we have Colin Kaepernick, that America wants to make some kind of a hero. It's really, um, we're really turned around completely in this nation, uh, not knowing who the heroes truly are and not recognizing that it is a heart problem. That's why we have naked men going into <laughs> waffle houses wanting to shoot and kill people. Is it racism? I guess probably a little bit. He's crazy. You know, anybody that hates somebody for their color, to me, they're a little bit mental. But uh, this guy was totally off the board. And uh, so we have Kaepernick, who is getting rich on his rhetoric, his foolishness. And then we have this Jake Locker, who disappeared from the public, didn't want all of that. And he's raising his family in a Christian home, and he's serving his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we don't hear about those guys. And that's the problem. You know, we don't hear about the good guys. We only hear about these bad guys that uh, the left wants to make into heroes. Very true. Very mm-hmm. true. And, I mean, who who wants to... Well, you know... You know, you're right. The, the the bad guys have become heroes. Well, what would they have done had he yep. spoke up? I mean, we know what they did to. Uh, um, oh, I lost his name. I know. I was trying and, to think of his name. Too. I want to say Ty, and that's not right. Tom. But, uh, no, that's not it either. But anyway, he, you know, he was a a Christian, is a Christian, stands on his principles, and they made fun of him for taking a knee in prayer. But it was okay for Kaepernick to take a knee in hate and that's exactly what it was in hate of in protest and i guess it's not prejudice that he protests all white people we're going into a break i hear the music you're listening to power talks with melody tim and Beth tebow. thank you tim tebow <laughs> no, i did i didn't i knew it began with a t <laughs> well, why did you have twice a time we're going into a break if you're small for most of it at what number? 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. And Melody and Beth Ann in this morning. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it. Nations have fought for it. It has been traded. It has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen. There's a reason for it to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. 
We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Ian Beth and in the morning, uh, we've kind of uh, talked about to- several different topics today, but we're going to go back to the phone lines. We have Ivan. Ivan, how are you today? Yes, good morning, Beth huh? and Good Melanie. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I just um, uh, tried to want to comment on a, uh, one gentleman who called earlier about communism and so on, but uh, people don't realize where the communism came from. Mm. And uh, the history, uh, people don't really know the history, uh, if it's uh, ancient or recent, okay, because they don't study them in school. They teach them all kinds of garbage, but uh, not the true uh, historical events which uh, caused empires to fall or be even created and so on. And communism came from, um, in Russia, of course, uh, uh, from Zionism through Bolshevism to communism. And um, that was part of the chain <clears throat> of, um, uh, of these diabolical um, uh, idea. And so... Um, Yes, the, the communism is uh, uh, the uh, what one would call it the, the chaos, and uh, this new world order wants to create mm. the order out of chaos. <clears throat> yes. So they created the chaos in order to make the order. I mean, it's it's uh, similar to Hegelian theory, thesis, antithesis, ecosynthesis. And uh, people don't realize what, what's happening in schools. Like you were talking earlier that uh, some of the schools and some of the people are, you know, still uh, Christian-oriented, but I'd say probably 80 or 90 percent are not. And... Uh, the teachers and professors and so on mm-hmm. uh, teach, uh, you know, teach um, the the chaotic um, idea, so that the once the the students grow older, that they can be then uh, reversed into the order which they supposed to be in, which would be the new world order. And uh, I think uh, there, there is a, it, it's a long, you know, it's, it takes time to go from uh, a stable nation to uh, uh, to what we see today, the world. Okay, where you have wars and rumors of wars, as the Bible says, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, <clears throat> people need to realize that. Uh, if the parents don't control their children, um, you will have um, you, you, you won't have uh, discipline and morality and so on, which is missing in today's generations. And uh, it it's you know they blame everybody else, but uh, yes, they are very lousy shows and movies and so on, which are being produced on TV and in and, and movies, and uh, to to uh, totally um, demoralize the youth, and so they have become wild and and, and killings and and all these these uh, so-called um, uh, mental illnesses is part, you know, it it, it is created. I mean, when a, 
baby is born, uh, it is blank, okay? So God gave him a blank mind to so he can grow in, in um, uh, truth and, and so on, so that um, he can learn the true way to, to live and to, and to talk to your neighbors and to his friends and so on. And this is all missing, okay? The, the, the parents don't have time for the kids because they have to work or do whatever. Uh, and uh, they cannot spank the kids because they'll get reported to the police and all, you know. And this is what's missing. I mean, uh, when I was little, I, I got my share, you know. Of, um, <laughs> even, even from school, I got, yeah. you know, when I went to school, uh, the teachers had um, like little um, from trees cut, uh, you know, maybe a two or three foot uh, long um, branch, and you get it on your fanny or on your um, on your fingers, on your hands, you know. You got if you talked or you made fun or whatever in school, and then of course it. it got to my parents, and uh, my mother was very strict, and uh, I got it twice as much at home, so this is <laughs> you get the most missing. school, that, you're going to get more trouble when you come home. That's what it was when that, we were that, growing up. That's right. Yeah, you got twice as much. Yeah. So this is the whole thing what's missing, and, and this is all brought through this communist idea of mm-hmm. uh, liberalism, freedom for, you know, doing whatever you want, you know, and thus destroying the, the, the moral and principles of, of life, you know, as, as God meant for the people to be. So I just wanted to make a comment on, on, you know, as far as that it's much deeper. I mean, yes, um, but communism was created uh in in a way, in order to to destroy the the, the, the church, uh, the morality of the people, the discipline, and so on. What what people need? I mean, they they need to be um, uh, you know on the ball. They need to be um, uh, you know they have to respect the elders. They have to respect the uh, uh, you know, their, their uh, teachers, uh, principals, uh, the their police, and so on. I mean, when I was small, I mean, you know, police was, uh, we had to say hello and so on. Even if you walked on a street and you uh, you see an elderly lady or gentleman, you always said good, good morning or good afternoon or whatever. And... Uh, when I was in Europe in 2002, they still, let's say, like uh, we went on a um, uh, um, trolley, like a trolley bus, and mm-hmm. when the kids were sitting, and we were all, you know, my cousin and her husband and myself, <clears throat> we were standing, the kids got up and they gave us their seats, which I don't think it would happen here, you know. And no, so I don't think so either. You know, so there is some discipline still in, uh, here and there, but it's it's um, uh, very meager, you know, to to find the people who would who think of somebody else, you know. Well, I think themselves. I think in the caliber of the professors and the teachers, especially in the colleges, but also in the high schools, but especially in the colleges, and this professor. Um, from Fresno that made all her rude and crude comments about uh, the first lady's passing of Barbara Bush. It was, they were nasty. And I don't care what you think of the woman. You shouldn't be saying the things that this gal said, but I've got some quotes from her from way back. And she is, she is a nasty person and um, she's not a conservative. I said, I would say she probably leans on the social uh, socialistic side, and it seems that those that do here in the U.S. are very vulgar. Their language is vulgar. They can't speak. They're violent. Uh, they're bullies. They will pick on people. Angry. Oh my gosh! They're yes. Angry. And she uh, 
I can't even read on air what she has said because of Who the, was that? the vulgar language. This is that uh, professor, uh, Rhonda Jarrar, J-A-R-R-A-R, and she was tweeting about the president, um, I mean, I'm sorry, about the first lady, Barbara Bush, when she passed, and it was terrible what she was saying. Mm, it was just terrible. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. And uh, mm. so she... You know, the, the, the university there, uh, she's a Fresno State professor. They're a little concerned about her behavior. You know, I don't think they've fired her yet, but they were a little concerned about her behavior and, and the things that she said. But this is quoting her from a video and interviews that she had done back in the day. She never was a good person, and they, and they hired her, and they had to have known that that was kind of her philosophy in life. She was praising hijack. But anyway, oh my goodness, Oscar, the music's going around of time. Appreciate so much for sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you. Melody, we are through with the Monday morning show. Yes, we are. You are. I'm not. I got another one to do. Oh, I got one. Yeah, yeah. So, you have a great day, and all of you have a great day, and we will see you back here tomorrow morning. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.